Okay, so this question is going to probably lead us into next week's episode. Okay. There are people who cannot have children because their bodies don't work right. Mm hmm. Right. I have a really hard time trying to say these things nice sometimes and what the correct way to say things are. Okay. If you haven't noticed. Yeah. You, yeah, yeah. You're doing okay. Okay. You're doing okay. All right. So, how are these people supposed to be fruitful and multiply if they can't? Yeah. And and obviously there's there's different levels of it, right? And what I what I mean is like cuz some like people a video game? <laughs> like because some or severities, I'll put it that way. Oh. Because because some people their bodies do not, for example, a woman may not be able to naturally ovulate. Right. But with fertility help she can be able to right so there's there's so medical can get involved you know yeah um and i know we'll, we'll get into all the the ivf type stuff next yeah. episode um and so i think that but if but if you're a couple and you have you cannot have kids because your bodies just simply right. will not allow you to um you know because because of one or the other or, or sometimes it's even both then there's no shame in that I, there can be heartbreak in that because I do know a couple that's that's their situation mm. and there there there's heartbreak in that and and so like and and my heart breaks for them because if you know I think if you're a couple and you want to have kids and you but you can't um, right. naturally have your own children that can be heartbreaking but it's not sinful it's not shameful it's not um, you're not like disappointing God or anything like that. And I think that's one of the things that unfortunately in some circles of the church, we've almost condemned people for not being able to have kids naturally. Yeah. So I don't want anyone to feel like if you can't have kids that you're somehow, you know, in sin. Um, and so, you know, in regards to how are they supposed to be fruitful and multiply when they can't? Yes. Oh boy. Um, cause, cause, if they find out that they can't, then they were trying to. Right. Yes. Yeah. And and so that gets back. And so they want to be they, fruitful and multiply. Right. So what are they supposed to do? You know, obviously there's the there's the disappointment and there's the sadness and there's the grief of it. Then I think you start examining all the options and let's say either you can't do like something like IVF or it's too expensive. Mm -hmm. um, and even things like adoption can be too expensive as an option for some people. And so, yeah, what if know, none of it works for you? Yeah, and, and you still want to be fruitful and multiply. multiply. Yeah, then and I, and I think this is and obviously if you're doing a clean read of Genesis one twenty eight, you're like if you're an original hearer. What I mean by clean mm -hmm. read, if you're an original hearer to that, you're only thinking about physical multiplication, like yeah. your own kids. However, when I look at it again and I, and it, and I see the connection between image bearers and children being fruitful, mm -hmm. you know, being fruitful and multiply, filling the earth with the image of God. Then, as as a Christian, one of the things that I can do is, you know, have come up alongside young people and be like a spiritual mentor or okay. spiritual a spiritual mother and father to you know young people and. And in so doing, you're actually causing, again, that idea of the image of God to spread throughout the earth because you're walking alongside those people. Like one of those fascinating stats to me is that for your generation, I think it's a, over one third of young people end up staying in church because of the connection they have with an adult who's not a parent. Mm. And so there's something about that that, and I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that there's so many broken homes that if you're a, st like, like, you know, you're a stable couple, you, you know, you, you're loving Jesus, you're, you know, you just have, you're, you're just have a stable life. And by stable, I don't mean perfect. I don't mean you got lots of money. I don't mean there's nothing going wrong. All I mean is that there's a stability in the marriage, mm -hmm. right? And that. Therefore, I think coming in and being able to walk alongside young people, especially those that have come out of broken homes, and you're not necessarily replacing mom, dad, that kind of thing, but you're able to just walk alongside them and mentor them 
and then and then they become image bearers mm. in the earth. I think that's a direct correlation and connection to what's being addressed here with the idea of being fruitful and multiplying, connecting it back to the image of God. I mean, even for me personally, every Father's Day, I have a few people that text me that say, Happy Father's Day. Thank you for being a spiritual dad to me. And and I so <laughs> that's okay. And so, but you know, and especially for for people that I've known since they were really young, you mm-hmm. know, and walked with them through through kind of life and their right. journeys, those kind of things. And and I and I don't take that for granted. Like that that means something to me. Um, and again, not that I'm trying to replace their parents either, mm-hmm. right? But you just trying to be a positive spiritual influence in their life. And so yeah. Never mind. <laughs> Okay, so I was going to ask you this question actually though. Okay. Is is converting people to Christianity a form of being fruitful and multiplying? In again, we're 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 going beyond the 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 plain reading of scripture. Yes. In but the what I was getting to earlier with the principle of seeing image bearers on the earth, mm-hmm. then then yes, you could make a tie-in between this and for example, the Great Commission in Matthew twenty eight, nineteen and twenty, where Jesus says, Go therefore make disciples of all nations. And okay. there there's there can definitely be a connection between those where yes, you're you are spiritually, if you want to put it this way, being fruitful, multiplying by seeing because I would want to say that it's more than just more than simply just leading someone to Jesus. It's they come to Jesus and then you walk with them, mm-hmm. you know, and I understand, excuse me, I think, and I understand sometimes all we're doing, you know, is able to lead someone to Jesus. That's the context for it. Yeah. I can lead someone to Jesus. I can't, they live somewhere else or whatever. Um, And, and so, and I've done that before with someone that has come to our youth camps. They come to know Christ, you know, they're, they're flying back to Texas. Mm-hmm. Um, And uh, this is one young lady. She came. To our, our youth camps, a, you know, a cousin of somebody, and she lives out in Texas. She got saved at one of our youth camps, and um, I mean, years ago. And just this last youth camp, this past summer, she's now married, was there, and and she was uh, just kind of crying over just the reality of, hey, I was saved here at this youth camp, and that's what it transformed my life. Mm. You know, I'm following Jesus now. Uh, she's married to someone who's going into ministry. Like, it's a cool story for her. And, but yeah, you can look at that and go, wow, that's, you know, being quote unquote fruitful, multiplying, seeing people come to know Christ and, mm. um, and, and especially coming from a family who, for her coming from a family that weren't following Jesus. Right. And so it was, that was for me, that's, I think you can definitely make the connection there that when we lead people to Christ or we come up alongside them and disciple them, that that is a, there, there is a, a fruitful multiplying you know, connection there. Sure. So beginning of the Bible was, we need some more people. And then beginning of new Testament was, we need some more Christians. Yeah, actually you want to preach that sometime? No. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. More sex. (laughs) Looking at you. (laughs) Yeah. I'd be good at that. Yeah, you can do that. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe I should have you up there with me and you just make random comments at times. Okay. I'm not sure how that would go. But... I could be the... the. Uh... <laughs> no, I don't want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Preach, Joseph. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. But you're going to have to learn to play the Hammond if you're going to yeah. do that. So. <laughs>